Welcome to the Bielik Method. Today what I'm going to be showing you is how to solve a system of equations using the substitution method. Okay, there are three different methods in order to solve a system. System being two equations where you have to find the one and only solution that would work for both. So what we're basically looking for is an x value and a y value that when plugged in would work for both the top equation and the bottom. Okay, substitution method is one of three. You can graph it Use the substitution method or the elimination method. You can find the graphing and elimination method in some of my other videos. But today, let's get started with the substitution. I personally like to call it the sticker method. The reason I call it the sticker method is because what you're trying to do is get a variable all alone. Like you see here in the first equation, we have y being the only thing on the left side of our equation. That is a good thing, and we do not have to do a first step. We are ready to go. We have what I like to call a sticker. Okay, so when you get that variable isolated, all alone, by itself, put a box around the expression on the other side. You now have that sticker, and I want you to picture peeling it off. Okay, just like you would a sticker on a, any kind of page. I want you to grab the corner, peel that sticker off, and you're now holding a sticker in your hand. That's right, I have props. Okay, so this sticker here can now be stuck into the other equation over the top of what it is equal to. We see that this sticker is equal to y. Therefore, I can take this sticker, which has that exact same expression on it, and I can plug it in right on top of the y. So what I want to do is actually do that. I want to put that sticker over the top. Now, if it helps you to use sticky notes, use it. Use the props that are available to you. Math is not an easy subject. Do what's going to help you. Okay? We now have 3x plus that expression, <laughs> which is 2x plus 1. I'm going to rewrite that equation out. 3x plus 2x plus 1 equals negative 9. Okay, I now have an equation that only has one variable in it. This is a good thing because we can solve equations with one variable in it by using inverse operations and combining like terms. I'm going to combine my like terms on the left side. The only two like terms that I have are the 3x and the 2x. So these are going to go together. 3 plus 2 is going to give me a grand total of 5x. We're going to add the 1 that hasn't been touched. And now I'm in what's called a two-step equation. I'm two steps away from solving for x. Inverse operation means the opposite of what you see. I see a plus. You probably see the same. So what we're going to do is subtract, which is the opposite of adding. Subtract the same value, 1, that will cancel it. If you're going to do it to the left side, you also have to do it to the right side. That's what's going to keep everything equal. Equality, balanced, you have to keep things equal. If I took, uh, if you were uh, pumping iron, right, on a barbell, and you took weight off of one side, it's no longer equal on both sides. It's just the same idea. If you're going to remove weight from this side, you need to remove weight from the other side. Take one away. I now have 5x equals, now this is where kids are often going to make mistakes. Negatives are not easy. You have to take your time and think them through. Negative 9 minus 1 more is taking you further back into the negatives. You're going to go back to negative 10. Okay, I now have 5x equals negative 10. Some of you at this point, you can solve it mentally, but I always like my students to show the last and final step just to make sure they're getting the right result. Divide by 5. Now you're wondering, why did I divide? 5 and x side by side means multiplication. We're using inverse operations, just like I used up here. Opposite of adding is subtracting. Opposite of multiplying is dividing. So I divide by 5, and what I'm left with is x equals, because this will cancel, negative 10 over 5. Take a second, think it out. A negative divided by a positive is going to be a negative, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. Great. You might think we're done. We're only halfway there, but the last half is very quick, very easy once you've got it. You have the x value. You know it is equal to negative 2. You're going to take that negative 2. You're going to plug it into one of these two equations. I personally believe that the top one would be easier. It is your choice. Either way will get you to the same result. It's just sometimes one is easier than the other. And I know that plugging a negative 2 right there for x 
is going to be pretty quick calculation to solve for y. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to just rewrite this equation off to the side over here. I'm going to plug in negative 2 where the x goes because we know that's what it's equal to. And I'm going to solve for y. y equals 2 parentheses. Negative 2 goes in the parentheses plus 1. And now I can solve for y. 2 times negative 2 is going to give me a negative 4 plus 1. Again, I tell you to take your time and be careful with negatives. It's easy to make mistakes. Negative 4 plus 1 is going to give you a grand total of negative 3. And we now have a value for x and y. If you were to graph these two equations, with it, which is another method that I could show you, and if you want to go to another video, you can see that. But I'll show you how to graph the two lines and find where they intersect. These two lines, when graphed, are going to intersect at negative 2, negative 3. Negative 2, negative 3. That is our solution to this system because that is an X and that is a Y when talking about a coordinate. Congratulations, you've made it through substitution method. There's some other tricks to the trade which you can find in some other videos, but this is a very basic one where your sticker, as I like to call it, is already provided to you. Um, in the next video, which is like a level two substitution, um, you can see where they don't provide you with the sticker. The Y isn't by itself already. You have to isolate that by same steps using inverse operations, rearranging things throughout the equation to get there. But thank you for sticking with me. You've made it through it. You can now do a substitution method system of equations.